the rate of higher education as expected by the government. The rate of higher education was 6.5% in 1998, 9.5% in 2007-8 and 12% in 2008 and 9. This is expected to reach 25% by 2020. The expected growth in higher education can be attained with the support of distant education in the country. The first open university in the country was established by the state government of Andhra Pradesh in 1982. In, in 1985, the central government established IGNO. The Karnataka State Open University, of course, was established in June 1996 under the Karnataka State Open University Act. It is the eighth open university to be started in the country and has come up as a result of India's long and rich experience in the field of distant education. Why quality and accreditation? Quality safeguards the producer and consumer. In higher education, it safeguards academic integrity. It identifies the producer and consumer and hence grants confidence to both. In higher education, safeguards qualification of graduates. Allows trade or marketability, the higher education cross border education. Accreditation grants recognition by the consumer and also the product itself. Again, higher education prepares the country's workforce and quality higher education is key to a strong and growing national economy. Higher education should thus be credible, relevant and should, should meet the needs of society. Accreditation and quality assurance concepts. You all know quality is a multi-dimensional concept with various interpretations like quality as excellence, quality as perfection, quality as value for money. So it returns investment accountability to the public and expenditure. Also, quality as transformation, quality as meeting consumers' needs, and also account for the students, I mean students are customers as well as products, hence in this case needs and wants may be different. Quality as conformance to standards, quality as fitness, for purpose. The quality is measured against stated mission and objectives. Quality as fitness for purpose and fitness of purpose. This is the most accepted interpretation in the higher education. Therefore, fitness for purpose is quality. Fitness of purpose is relevance. Next, the role of technology in higher education to increase variety of educational services medium, to promote equal opportunities to obtain education and information, to develop a system of collecting and disseminating educational information, to promote technology literacy, to support distance learning, to support sharing experience and information with others. Now, with regards to the distance education, distance education is thought to be an effective way of educating people of all sections in society. The delivery system in distance education is different than that in the conventional on-campus teaching. However, distance education is considered as close substitute for the conventional on-campus teaching, keeping in mind the premises that different types of media like print, audio, video, telephone, computer based communication system etc. are synchronized in the delivery process in distant education and open distance learning. What are the challenges? You know, 
with regards to the distant ligand, there's a misconception about the standards normally considered as low standard or no standard. The quality assurance levels, right criteria to identify quality standards due to divergent student community. Face-to-face -to -face contact between teacher and the students, difficulty in getting right feedback at right time, reliability of the technology adopted and the infrastructure they're in, absence of reward system to motivate teachers, and also reliability of the evaluation process. In order to find appropriate answers to these challenges of higher education institutions, the higher education institutions should adopt the following processes. Number one, curricula, innovation, and learning process through several of these, like teaching in complexity, uncertainty, etc. Or and also with linking higher education with previous levels of education, including education of all. The second one, research. Research requires reorientation so as to serve the society, and hence the following teams, you know, considered as uh, priority areas like participatory action research, research linked to global and uh, local needs, and, and et cetera, et cetera. The third one, social and community engagement. I mean, universities can connect citizens with local knowledge. They have also an important role to play in linking technology to citizenship and in bringing about a a democratization of science and technology. This, the issues to be addressed as we have shown, like democratization of knowledge for society, contribution to balance knowledge, etc., etc., etc. The fourth one, the institutional management and operations, like governance, the leadership, the organizational culture, and higher education, the management should like um, should take into account the social and environmental values necessary for the contribution of articulation of the substantiality uh, paradigm with their community. And of course, in terms of the participative and democratic processes, higher education, students' implications, role, green building energy, and so on. And finally, what are the steps to achieve excellence? Full exploitation of technology is the only way to achieve excellence in open distance learning system. In this era of information technology, ICT represents a significant factor in the rapidly changing relationship between learners or users or clientele. Transforming conventional processes to e-processes with the following proposed steps like planning and development of academic programs course-wise, design of e-content, student admission, learner support service, learner assessment and evaluation, technology, infrastructure, organization support, etc. The advances in information and communication uh, technology provide great opportunity to enhance teaching and learning in higher education by both on-campus and distant education. Even disabled students who are denied access to traditional institutions and all those who require updating of their knowledge and all those who require updating of their knowledge and lifelong education can now be benefited by the modern facilities of communication. Through open universities and distance learning initiatives, mechanisms are in place to upgrade uh, skills at regular intervals and develop new competencies. I would like to conclude with few of them. The role of ICTs in the education is recurring and unavoidable. Rapid changes in the technologies are indicating that the role of ICT in future will grow tremendously in the education. By observing current activities and practices in the education, we can say the development of technology within education has strongly affected on what's learned, how, we, how it is learned, and when and where learning takes place, who is learning and who is teaching. 
technology is also i mean also focuses modification of the role of teachers this has been discussed in the morning session also in addition to the classroom teaching they will have other skills and responsibilities teachers will act as virtual guides for students who use electronic media ultimately the use of technology will enhance the learning experiences of students also it helps them to think independently and communicate creatively it also helps students for building successful uh, careers and lives in an increasingly technological world with this uh, i thank the um, participants for having listened to me and many is there any discussion on these issues at the later stage now i would request uh, my panel members one by one i mean probably i would request them to restrict their uh, um, presentation for 10 minutes and uh, the first speaker would be uh, dr elizabeth shirley director indian institute of information technology and management kerala dr shirley thank you